Uh, Michelle, whenever you're ready, um, you can either come on cam if you choose, or if not, you can just uh, unmute. Hey. Is your mic is your mic uh, working again like it was? Can you hear right. me? Yep, there you are. Good afternoon. So you've had an eventful morning. Um, so you uh, you know that I've only had about ten minutes. So excuse the way I've looked. And we're going to talk about what's going on. And um, I'm going to talk about it very quickly while I have you in case something happens. And um, I am completely shut down my phone. I cannot even call 911 out. And um, it says that I have been blocked. And um, my camera is off on my Facebook, everything. And um, when I even go into my phone account to log in, um, I'm being blocked also. All right, okay. let me, while I have you quick, um, do you have a way to get uh, information out uh, that your team has collected? <clears throat> um, they do, and um, I have a confirmation that there is also been, um, they were watching by satellite this morning of uh, my location, um, but, um, in the last, when I started talking to your team, I had just radioed out and gave the password order and um, to start sharing everything and putting everything in place to get, um, everything rolling. But, um, you are the first person, basically my people, not my, our group that's been listening, our listeners right now, they do not know that I'm okay. Um, so if you're on Facebook, um, my group of people, your group of people, please get out there that I am okay. Um, and, um, um, you didn't scare me. Um, I know what y'all are trying to do. Um, and, um, um, you know, I'm a strategist and, um, um, but that is the seriousness of this. Um, and um, that at this point that I cannot even call 911. All right. Give us, um, <clears throat> give our listeners a little bit of a rewind of uh, who don't know you, who did maybe didn't see your uh, podcast with, uh, who did you do that podcast with? I'm sorry. I forgot his name. Um, Tank. Tank. And yeah. In row. Awesome. In row. Yeah. So those of you that are out there, uh, I retweeted that on Twitter. Uh, if you want to find that podcast, um, there's some very interesting stuff in there that, that Michelle talked about. Michelle, give us kind of a rewind if you could just kind of go back to when you were younger. So, to what brought you to, um, be in contact with, uh, Linda Collins Smith, if you could kind of give us a background. Um, so, um, I was, um, fighting issue one tort reform in the state of Arkansas last year. Um, they were trying to take our, um, seventh amendment rights away. Linda um, was on the forefront, absolutely against issue one, as you were also. Um, and so for eight months, um, I had first started as um, coming in, I had been asked to run for House of Representative in my state. And um, within three weeks, um, they realized that I was not um, able to be bought off. I wasn't going to... Um, I wanted to, my platform was the constitution. I was at, told by the Republican party, I could not run on the constitution as a platform. And then I was threatened. And, um, within two days, the threat was confirmed. I pulled out of the race, which was the best thing for me because, um, I realized I was more powerful on the outside than I'll ever be on the inside. That was their mistake. And they would have probably been better to keep me busy running an election because then um, I took on issue one, tort reform. And um, Linda and I started working together. And when we defeated issue one in the courts, um, Linda Collins Smith was the only senator and House representative that called me that night and congratulated me on the win. And I... Um, she asked um, women of Arkansas against issue one not to leave the state. She said, I had proven I was the real deal and I would not be compromised. 
and um, she then started um, explaining what she already knew about her election, her primary. You know, I was in that process, how they um, destroyed her. You know, they were trying to say that she was crazy. I mean, um, they were coming after her financially, you know, the powers of the bee. Um, and, um, and we were talking, she knew that, um, I had been investigating for a, a while. I've been working with veterans for a couple of years with PTSD and suicide. It was my veterans who actually gave me the word about child protective services and DHS and um, using our military bases to traffic kids out. And they were asking for my help. So I had been investigating that when um, with issue one, traveling the state for eight months, um, people begin to talk to you, people begin to give you intel, people um, begin to ask for help. You know, they're desperate. You and I, people like you and I, they're desperate for someone to help them because um, your FBI, your, your phone agencies, all these people have failed them. And, um, and so I was just like, okay, we're going to do something. And, um, you know, Linda Collins Smith was the real deal. And, um, she did not compromise on our gun rights. She um, was helping with child protective services. She was taking on Arkansas DHS in a legislative form and, with all my parent cases, all my clients and their clients, my, my team, their teams, we were all talking that Linda was the only one that we could call and we could verify, we could get the information back that we needed, or she was helping with the information we had. And um, real quick, uh, people are concerned with your safety and concerned with, um, you know, you being able to uh, <clears throat> kind of uh, protect yourself. D tell us about how you feel about that comment. Um, it's a little concerning um, because your your contact was the first person I was able to connect with. And that's why he got the messages like he did. And um, But your contact was the first person that... Um, I was able to reach this morning. Okay. So I think you understand the seriousness right now. Yeah. And, um, I think you and I, what we had a little discussion about last night. Um, so, uh, feel good about that. Um, all right. So part of what you talked about last night was, or in the, in the interview with tank, um, was, First of all, these these railroad uh, deaths, uh, these two boys that died uh, in 1985, um, that uh, Salon.com did an article on that called Right Wing Conspiracy Theory, uh, that there was something else uh, to to it, or there may there there's nothing else to it. Excuse me, and that there this, this, the slander lawsuit uh, succeeded. Um, which of course then makes it look like then that there's definitely nothing else to it. If the lawsuit succeeded, right. Can you just give us some history about that case being from Arkansas and what you know about it without kind of, you know, um, you know labeling, uh, accusations, but just what you know about it. And the boys on the track, um, is what we call it in Arkansas and the boys on the track. Um, I was a teenager when that happened. Um, I grew up um, knowing, um, you know, Clinton type mafia type people. Um, and, you know, um, and so the boys on the track um, is not a conspiracy theory type thing, but the, um, if you're in Arkansas and if you were probably in a neighbor's home, the story would be that. Um, the boys on the track were talking and um, had witnessed um, Governor Clinton and other people. It was a drug deal. And the story is that these two um, wonderful boys 
and laid on the track together and made a pact to commit suicide and let the train run over them. And they did not move at all when the train came, you know, and hit them. And so you and I both know that it would be very hard for two young boys to lay on a track and not let their body move or anything. That night when all that happened, there was over, um, it was like 4,000 911 calls that had came through. Um, and the, there was, there is a, a, a paper trail that was very well hidden. And during that time, the, um, the DEA refused to even bring it to a grand jury. Um, they had been asked to bring it to a grand jury, which constitutionally should have never been done anyway. You have the right as a, a civilian to demand a grand jury. And so just people know constitutionally wise, if anyone ever refuses you a grand jury, um, you better keep pushing because as a civilian, you constitutionally right have the right to a grand jury. And um, I want to make that point. That case is really interesting, and we'll just kind of leave it at that and allow our researchers to to dig down that rabbit hole. But I just wanted to highlight that as kind of, you know, something that you talked about uh, on the show, and we'll just kind of leave that there. Let's move the discussion forward now to present day. How, what was your first uh, reaction when you heard Linda had been murdered? It was our evidence. Immediately. Um, do you have, do you, are you, how can you get us, um, how can we get this information out to, we probably have a thousand researchers between several different servers working on getting this information out that want to cooperate uh, the story of what uh, she potentially had. And we don't want to taint any grand jury investigation. We don't want to have any problems like that, but we want to be able to cooperate um, some of the information that she had on CPS slash DHS. How can we get that information to our researchers? Um, researching wise, um, people need to be very aware that um, there is a um, a correlation with um, Nancy Schaefer. Um, and I would hope that at this point, people, we've always, the power, of the, we don't believe the narrative. But you're missing some things that are right in front of your face. And um, researching wise, this ties into 9 11, to MERS, um, money laundering, um, shell cases. And when you look at CPS, um, researching wise, you need to be looking at your cargo and shipping containers that are donors and that were access to um, the Clinton Foundation and those power of the bee in that circle. And so if you are a great research person, um, I would be aligning myself right now that if you wanted to locate, and um, people need to realize that there's over 300, around 333 children come, um, that are removed by Child Protective Services in America um, homes a day. And 89% of these children that are in the system right now are not there on true abuse allegations. America right now is the number one consumer for child sex trafficking. And 88% of those children that came from, um, that are in the sex trafficking system came from foster care. They were at one time in the foster care system. And so um, if you put all these pieces together, um, and if you go look at Linda Collin Smith's um, session last um, year, you would see that we had, um, there was, you know, it's up to now around 53 million missing, but there are two sets of books running. If all of you started doing Freedom of Information Act, um, with CPS, DHS, it's going to lead you to a, um, not a million dollar, um, um, situation. This will actually lead to, we're talking about billions. So we, we talked a little bit and I was able to corroborate that 
they had kind of two books, right? That's how I've seen corporate, how corporate works. They have a set of books that they give for, for auditors and for, you know, to, to kind of here, look over here. <clears throat> and then they have a separate set of books. That's the actual numbers. Um, did, did you find that in your research as well? Absolutely. And, um, we had been giving that to, um, the FBI and to p people that we thought that could stop some things that were going on here or that it would lead to a trail to definitely put a dent and um, restoring um, civilian rights back to people, constitutional rights, that um, this led into a, a bigger trail and um, the bigger trail ties into your 9-11, your MERS, um, to the patent that was made in 1998, um, is a very important patent to know. And, um, and, um, so what, um, which patent are you referencing? I'm going to give that to you. In 1998, there was a patent made by Merle Lynch that actually, um, it moved all of us out of the country by DNA. It, it literally patented every one of us. It patented your DNA, your offspring, your intellectual property, um, everything. And that patent was done through Merle Lynch. Um, and that patent is extremely important in this system because it ties into your 9-11. 9-11 had to happen so they could change the banking system between 2001 and 2005. And the reason that that needed to happen so they could implement MERS, which is your mortgage electronic registration system. And when you look at the MERS system, that's where you can tie into your judges, your circuit court clerks, and you can see a money laundering. Like you think you own your home. You do not own your home in the United States. And, but what we had found was your children are being moved through that system as commodity. And, um, and, um, so when you're looking at this system in your research, do not look at it as a person or as a child, you um, need to realize that they're making money as a commodity. They're being considered as shipping and, um, and literally as a dog tag, I would be really researching in the dog tag system with um, CPS on these children and um, people that work at the airports. Um, you need to be looking at the um, children that are coming through your airports with 200. That's enough to fill an entire plane. And, and they only have about three or four people with them and they're leaving the country and um they're going to china pakistan and um your american children are actually being sold and as organ donors to china and everything and then if you look at um um people that have been involved with the clinton foundation are your donors you can see that um you can look at the cargo you can look at the um the gulf trainer um port in florida that's a very important thing to be looking at right now yeah. and start studying your cargo ships someone should have their eyes on the the vessel and map at all times coming out of there and um that will lead you to a lot of what and um, we were all working on here in arkansas all right appreciate that if there's any information you can give us to uh you know you have my email uh, if you want to drop me a google drive or anything like that let's and let's I go the drive built to be able to put stuff right now while i'm talking and um it had disappeared um <laughs> that was the one thing this morning that it i should have got it from you last night <laughs> or this or earlier this morning um all right funny. so so um, how, how can we find the links between Linda Collins Smith and uh, this grand jury testimony on Friday. Um, you need to be looking at um, Arkansas. Just it's taken us two or three years to become a marijuana. Um, that was a 
a power of the bees of getting our marijuana implemented here. And um, you need to trust no one in a, in a position that could have changed this course, who could have stopped it. And um, when I would say that um, the amazing thing about Senator Linda Collins Smith is that she was not going to compromise and um, and that there is an absolute correlation to um, look at the things that Arkansas has been battling to get implemented in place, the marijuana, the guns, and because they're not just like, you know, like you may have a gun um, rights, you may take a child rights and just think, well, that's her battle, that's her battle. But um, Linda, um, she was helping us all fight our battles and the reason that we were all working together is because all the puzzle pieces fit together and um we had the evidence that absolutely probably could have finally um taken down people that people have taken tried to take them down for a long time what is your let me ask you your opinion on a topic um because i I need, I, we're trying to be very careful with what we have evidence wise. And we'd also don't want to potentially taint any investigations. Right. So we want to, we want to, we want to cr crawl on a little line here. Let me, let me ask you your opinion on what I have been reporting on passionately with Megan Fox and others about CPS, about DHS, about the bigger picture of the lack of oversight and the nanny state that is telling parents how to raise their kids. What is your, can you just kind of give us uh, a, a few minutes on your, your, your opinion on those kind of, uh, that kind of discussion? Well, my opinion is that um, the Amber Alert, the National Alert, that the people that run those systems, and if you look at the Podestas that um, even got their resource, that is not my opinion. There is paperwork that proves that even when your children come missing, that and the Amber Alert, the National um, Missing Exploited Children is being written by pedophiles. But, you know, people that have been, you know, have spent time in prison. And when you look at those connections of who they're involved with, that's absolutely involved with the Clinton Foundation. That's not an opinion. That is, you could go into FBI documents, you could go into courts, you can prove this. Now, my opinion is that the um, the American children that are coming up missing, first of all, for them to take over and, and talk about Agenda 2030, you have to break the soul, you have to break the American family. And um, I'm always going to believe the American family is more powerful. The one thing that they have always been afraid is when we all united. We are not indifferent like they want us to believe we are. And um, if you believe that it's against Republican and Democrat, if you believe it's against black, white, gay, and um, they're winning. If, you, if that's your thinking right now, you, they're winning. The, the truth is it's between us and government. It's you versus the state. And, and so when you can start thinking that way, we're not absolutely necessarily indifferent we all just want to be loved we want to have our family we want to be safe and um, if you want to choose to have a gun you have that right to choose to have a gun if you don't want to have a gun you have that choice and um but there is a very huge battle on the price of life the price on your child because it's the um it's funneling money to other things it's a sexual perversion, but there is a war on your children. And I, my opinion is it's very important to break the dynamics of a family. And I'm not talking about just your family. Think about, we don't have family reunions anymore. You know what I mean? We're not communicating. Social media was set up where we weren't communicating each other. What you're seeing is the propaganda. They want you to see what they want you to see. And what you need to do is get outside your neighbor, go talk to your neighbor and say, hey, are you okay? What, what's going on with your case? Why did they take your child? You know, And if you just get on the ground and you start talking to people, you will realize very quickly that the narrative that you're being told is not true in the media. 
that we're not really that indifferent. We all really want the same things. And the one thing that they are absolutely afraid of is when we all unite and we say that you have absolutely been using our energy and our sources to survive and you have taken our rights away. And people think that the government the government isn't supposed to, they're in control and it's not supposed to be that way. The government is supposed to be working for you. It's we, the people, it's what's behind you. We, the people. And what many of you did is you became afraid. You thought that they had power over you. And, um, you know, I remember when I was talking to an FBI agent about children missing and I used, um, a profanity and he told me not to use that profanity. And I was like, how dare you, talk to me about profanity, you're not doing nothing about me telling you about child being sex trafficked. Like you haven't done anything. You're lying. So that's an example of how they want to police you. They want you to think that they can tell you, no, you know, no, you won't do this. No, you won't speak out. And I cannot tell you how many people in Arkansas and worldwide who have sent me messages and said, I was threatened. I've been afraid to speak out. And today, um, these things may not have a connection on her death, but what I would hope is that her death is a reminder to every one of us that there are really some bad things going on in the United States and in the world. And that we, every one of us have the ability to put all the puzzle pieces together and that when we all unite and when you learn your Bill of Rights, you learn your Constitution and you say no more. And I'm not talking about violence. I'm talking about um, just saying there's no more of this. We're, we're, we know what you've done. We know who the, the bad people are. And, um, and we realize who they're using to make you think the propaganda is true. And, um, and it's about, it's a humanitarian crisis. You're a modern day slave right now. And yeah. That's a um, modern day slave. Then that's when we can change things. When, you're, you're, you're right on point there with, um, and I don't mean to interrupt you. We're, we're, we're running a little bit low on time. We only got about 20 minutes left and I want to make sure I get to a couple more things and then potentially open it up to any of the other mods here in zoom with us who want to ask a question. So let me get one more question in and, and then I'll open it up to uh, the chat room or if any other mods want to ask a question, please uh, hop in here with me and um, uh, make it a good one. Obviously we're running low on time. Um, Michelle, I have read so many heartbreaking stories about um, everyday parents like uh, me, like uh, other people just going about their lives who have had their lives destroyed by child protective services and private organizations that have taken kids with corrupt judges away from their families and they've disappeared into the sex trafficking realm. I have read way too many stories on that to the point where I am walking straight into the sound of gunfire on this until it gets resolved. Tell us about some of the cases that you have worked on and tell me I'm not crazy when I read these cases and try to expose them because it really feels like I'm, uh, people are calling me the crazy conspiracy theorist for trying to expose the horrors that are happening to everyday families in America. Um, I had the same battle. I mean, they were telling me, you know, the, the, the people want to say it's conspiracy theory. It's, this is no way this is true. And when I was working in Arkansas, there were literally children missing that we have not been able to, you know, see. And, where I have a case right now that um, I'm going to send you the Supreme Court case today because I want you to read it. And um, that case has right now at the Supreme Court because John McCain was involved in that case. Um, but Arkansas literally transferred a child to Illinois and changed the name of the birth certificate. The mother kidnapped the child because McCain and them were telling them, you know, you got to prove this child is yours and her children. And she went to prison in Arkansas and because of all of these things. And um, there was a priest raping people. And, and so when I was looking at these cases, 
you um, realize that there is a pattern of drug tests, setup, counseling, and DNA tests that are even being lied about. And then you get other people, other states, who start start sending your, your case numbers. And then you start working with the other advocates. You're talking to people like me and you. And what we started realizing is this is a playbook. There's no way that just one state or 20 um, bad DHS people decided to lie and take kids. It's a national playbook that has been set up and um, to seize children to um, take them out. And um, the, documentation the documentation there is just too strong. And, and then I remember in November, I was talking about these organ transplants, organ donor type things, and people are like, she's lying, she's lying. Well, look at your headlines this week. You see teenagers showing up with their organs taken out of them. This is, unfortunately, I wish what we were saying, we just had an imagination. I wish we could say we were lying, but we're not. Unfortunately, we're not. But this is not, there, this is a playbook that has been given. And um, it's very important that you realize that if you will not be um, the voice for a child, who are you going to be the voice for? Yeah, we've, we've done research on the funding, uh, the, federal, the federal grants given to states uh, for adopt, excuse me, adoption services and things like that. Do you, do you know for sure, have you read documentation that individual states have quotas to uh, ensure they get a certain amount of funding as part of that federal grant program? Absolutely. I have the documentation as well as there were other senators that had the documentation. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, I want to open it up. Uh, go ahead. If you do not meet the quota, the exact number for the year, the next year you do not get the federal funding. All right. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Let me open it up to uh, anyone here at pamphlet or anyone else. Carrie, if you want to hop in, anyone who wants to hop in and ask a question, we got about uh, 10 minutes or so uh, before we'll have to start closing the show down. I, I would just like to say thank you for coming on. I don't, I don't really have a question, but I do want to say to our audience and everybody listening out there that um, this, this is highlighting kind of, this, this this whole like everything that's going on here is kind of highlighting how we can change the way that media works and, and investigation yeah. and this kind of stuff. Media, media is their number one tool against you right now. No. You expose media. That's why nine eleven has been so important to expose. That's why I don't drop nine eleven and I talk about nine eleven. Is media right now is your number their number one tool for what is happening. That's why you all have to be the news. You That's all have to be the media. I said last night on my Facebook, we don't have a gag order. They put a gag order on Linda Collins Smith. And even that gag order, there's always a gag order on media. Realize that. They tell you what they're told to tell you. You and I don't have the gag order. You and I have the voice. You and I are the media. You and I are the ones that can tell the story. <laughs> Thank you. That is, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Spot thank on. You. Thank spot you for on. your work. Uh, Michelle, uh, I'm Thumper, and uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, uh, what do you, uh, do you, do you have any uh, uh, idea of the, is there, uh, does the CPS Interstate Compact, uh, have you ever heard of that? Does that make any uh, uh, connection for you? It absolutely does. Can you expand on that? You need to start really looking at Nancy Schaefer's death. And um, again, Clinton Foundation. Um, I'm promising you that that documentary um, is in the hands of CPS and DHS. And um, the um, gulf that I told you to go look at and the cargo and all that, you mm -hmm. really need to start looking at that stuff. It's going to lead you to exactly what you need. What about any connections to Nexium or the Finder's Cult? Um, I can. I'm going to put it out right now that Nancy Schaefer, the weekend that she was killed, 
She had um, hard evidence of um, senators and a certain person being on a plane and removing American children out. They left on a certain date. She had recorded them coming back and the plane was not and um, did not return with all American children. That is um, what got Nancy Schaefer killed. And that is the last thing that she recorded. And um, and so um, um, someone that's in the very high power was on that plane. And, um, and that turns into um, the Linda Collins Smith testifying. And, um, and those connections are all there. So you really need to be studying um, your plane routes. You need to be talking um, um, because it's going to give you some serious pieces that we had documentation that we have. And um, you thought that there was no witnesses with Nancy Schaefer, and I have to tell you at this point, you were wrong. Appreciate that. Uh, Season Pickles, I see you. Uh, Pixels has been doing a lot of digging in our newsroom, and we wanted to. I'm going to talk to you after the show and see if I can get you to uh, join us in our newsroom, if you don't mind, to, to help okay. us, um, to point us in directions, because we we have gathered a ton of information and you know how that comes. It just becomes a waterfall of information, but putting the dots together um, with someone like you who has already done that research would be a lot, very helpful. Season pixels. If you have a question, please do hop in. Um, otherwise, if you're just listening, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just, uh, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to say, I, I hugely, hugely appreciate you coming on with such short notice. And, and this is, um, like Abe, Abe said, we, we've been digging in this really, really hard, and, and you being here is just instrumental, and I just want to uh, express my gratitude to you. The thing I appreciate with all of you is um, when you're doing it alone, or not alone, but you know, when you're, you're digging something, sometimes you think, I know I'm not crazy, and so when you, you're talking to someone, and it's so good to know that you have a piece, or that you have the same piece, and it's just, it's so great to be able to talk to people and say, oh my God, we're all on the same track. We all know this. And, um, and that maybe mom and dad and uncle and them don't think we're crazy anymore. You know, that we, um, but, um, I work 20 hours a day on this. I mean, literally, I mean, um, um, I'm not, um, I've had like maybe two hours of sleep in three days and, um, and um, the one thing that they were always worried about me was I was able to put so many pieces together um, within literally like you could be at a, a table with me talking to me and you might mention something and I would say, oh, well, you know, that goes to this, this and this. And, um, and I can tell you that the other side knew that because they would sit there and talk to me and they would say a name and I would be like, oh, well, that name goes there. And they're like, how do you know that? How, how did you put that piece together? And then, of course, I was thinking, well, how do y'all not know this? And that's what would frustrate me. So it was really nice. Um, it, it's, it's empowering um, when you're just um, a mom, you know, sitting literally on a cell phone or something, and you see all of us coming together saying, we've got you. We, we've got you. And, and I can tell you right now, I know a hundred percent we got you running right now. I we got, and we got your back, uh, Michelle. Sorry. Um, I want to get my co-host internet has just fixed itself and he has not had a chance. He is the one who had become close friends with Linda. We had her on the show a couple of times. He had been talking to her several times. I want to give him an opportunity uh, to, to talk to you for a little bit. So let me hand the floor over to my co-host, Derek. Michelle, the, the, the things that you and Linda have uncovered um, are lid-blowing, to, to say the least. Um, I spoke with her, and, and I told these guys that I, I'm not a big phone conversation type person. I've spent hours on the phone with her. Just, it, just We would throw things back and forth. And listening to the show that you were on yesterday – 
if there is any way that I can help in that inner circle that you guys have, I'm, I, I'm all in because I, I told everybody when, when I brought this up and, and when Abe sent the story to me that this doesn't pass the smell test by any stretch of the imagination, it doesn't. And, and, and Pam has put so many people on this and, and we have dug for 48 hours now and, and the connections that we're finding, I mean, some of them you've probably already know, and, and I hope that you'll join us in our research room later on. But I just want to say that the work that you have done, I know it's not going to just stop right here now because I, I, th I think the war has gotten really real. And the war has been real for a while, but um, we knew about two weeks ago um, the war was extremely um, serious um, here with what we had uncovered. And, um, and I know that without giving information, we're like, you know, said, but I know that you just listening to my interview, if you were talking to her, you know what I'm saying is absolutely confirming and correlating what you were talking about. And, um, and we've, um, if we shut up on this one, um, I will believe that they have us beat. And um, I really will. And so, um, game over. And so, we can't shut up. That's why I did the interview with Tank yesterday. And that's why I did my Facebook Live yesterday to put the face out there. Because I felt it was very important that we we came out to the table finally and we take our anonymous faces off and we say, this is who I am. And, um, you will not shut me up. We're all joining forces and, um, we're demanding change. We all have value. You all matter. And, um, the people that have been fighting and working very hard, we've been working very hard and we've been willing to put our life on the line um, to change the course. And, um, we had the evidence to change the course. Amen yeah, to absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh, um, we have, we have a caller. That's uh, one of our loyal, um, helpers and listeners. T jams. Can you hear me? I don't see the guest account in here, Dave. That might be why he doesn't. Oh, okay. All right. But, uh, Michelle, you know what you're talking about, talking about being coming out to the light. I mean, Pam has been doxxed by major media outlets. Um, I've been doxxed, AIDS been doxxed, so we know exactly what you're talking about in that. I've been staked out, which I thought was really weird. Um, I was staked out for eight months at my house last year. This, this whole story here that's going on right now, all, all this stuff, you coming on here right now, that's like, this is why I built this channel. Cause this is something that I think I kind of knew right off the bat, the, the mainstream, just, they, they're not really gonna, they're not gonna, gonna touch it, at least not in this way. Um, um, two weeks ago, they took my laptop and my other phone down in nine hours. <laughs> and, um, wow. and so then you have now know what they've got me down today but they had my laptop completely and my other phone in nine hours. I can tell you that there were people that were working with her that I had met with at the table at the same, within a 48 hour period before that. I can tell you right now that some of those people were threatened yesterday from family members that no one should have known that was a family member. So this is not just a neighbor buddy threatening. We are fighting people that are in government and um, when you have people in very high agencies running license plates that look like Arkansas license plates that have been following me that come back to unknown source, we knew exactly who had been following me and who had been sitting in front of me. Um, and so, um, but eight months ago, I, um, for eight months last year, when we were fighting issue one and all them, and um, was followed by multi-cars and um, sitting at my son's football game, having two people come sitting by me telling me, um, I had even uncovered where the underground government had came out and, um, showed up at my son's football game and sat next to me. 
and offer to help me. So we had, um, out, we had lined up with people, um, that had had enough, um, that were willing to, um, help on the child trafficking and the CPS side. It had became so gross or what you used to do was starting to affect their soul that they were willing to help. And it wasn't someone trying to line out with you where they can take you out. These are people um, who are flipping um, on the other side. They're, um, they've came to the good side. And I always say, please remember, um, people that do bad things, every one of us has a past, and everyone has the opportunity to make change. The people that have evidence that you may have been a part of this system, you have the opportunity right now to come clean and speak up. But when you're working with people like Barr and all of them, attorney Barr, he has a past. That doesn't mean they're always still doing their past. I think that's very important that in your research, um, you're very careful who you trust, but you also understand that in this um, research, some part you have to let the judgment come down and be willing to work with people. It's Amen important, to that. Very important to your, um, to your keys. Amen to that. And we really would like to, um, to, to continue to amplify your voice and have you um, guide us in a direction. I will get in contact with you after the show to get you over to the newsroom if you have time at some point today. I know you're, you've had a sleepless night last night. I did as well. It was an honor speaking with you last night and today. Uh, let me give you a minute to get a final word in of, um, of what you wanted to, to talk about today if we missed anything. And then uh, we're going to have to close uh, down the show and move on. We've already uh, taken a lot out of time of your time Pamphlet um, to you know the thing i want to say is um you know um our prayers and condolences are out to linda collins smith's family i think that's very important in this movement and um, she's an amazing woman she was a christian and um, she was love white and um i would hope that we would continue to live by the example of um and being a voice do not compromise and and be willing and um, none of us are leaving this earth alive we don't, we don't you know and i think it's very important that we speak up but our prayers and condolences are to her family and um it's very important that that we do not let her death be in vain and so my my message is that even when there is darkness there is good and right now we have a platform that we can change the darkness to good and that every one of you have value, use your voice. You do not have a gag order on you. You have the opportunity to not let this be an untold story. Amen to that. Um, God bless you. My God watch over you. And if there is anything we can do, if there's you, you have uh, ways to get a hold of me or my brother, or um, we'll put you in contact with people here. Um, please do just to stay safe. And if uh, if there's anything, anything we can do, let us know. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank I'd, you. I'd just yeah. like to say we we're here 24 hours a day, literally live 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if you ever got anything that needs to get out there, we're we're here. The floor is yours. Whenever. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, guys, that is Michelle Walker, uh, close friend and confidant to Linda Collins Smith. It's, it was an honor spending time with you today, uh, Michelle. Um, we are right at the top of the hour, so we're up against it. Indy, um, I want to do one thing real quick, and then let me hand it over to you, and I'll play the show closer. 1832, 10 August 2018, HRC has taken a number of villages from Haiti. Reread WikiLeaks, uh, so much is open source, Clinton emails, so much left to be connected. Why are the children in Haiti in high demand? How are they smuggled out? Adoption process, local staging ports, friendly to Clinton Foundation, track donations, cross against location relative to Haiti. Think logically, the choice to know will be yours. Uh, again, a link with, to the Clinton emails. We, who are we taught to trust the most? This will not be easy. The end. Q. Riri drops R.E. Haiti. At some point, it will not be safe 
for them to walk down the street. Pure evil. How many in Washington and those around the world in power worship the devil? Conspiracy? Big news? The world is watching you. Amazingly, when I put in 1832, the Vatican Bank and Rothschild and the Holy See comes up too. Indy, let me give you a minute. Again, um, Michelle, I said this on our show yesterday that I'm going full Hannity mode in, into this. I, I, it, it deserves it. Like I said, it doesn't pass the smell test. So anytime you need to come on, like Pam said, absolutely don't don't hesitate get a hold of abe get a hold of somebody in here because this does not pass the smell test and and i know whatever is pushed out by law enforcement unfortunately i am in that field i i, I i'm just not going to believe that that's the way that's the way i'm going to look at things um don't believe the narrative i'm going to promise you that right now i can tell that um a hundred percent um um there was um do not trust any sources in um, law enforcement in Arkansas right now. Um, and I can say that at a hundred percent do not trust them. And I am telling you that as an uh, alarm, do not trust them. And I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you, Absolutely. Michelle. A ab yeah. Absolutely. Abe, let's bypass the, the um, show closer. I'll have the sound individual put that in. Um, I know we ran a little bit over, so let's, uh, right. let's just throw things over to Carrie because I think that you know that's the great way to end the show today. All right, sounds good. I want to break this uh, uh, news and then hand it the pamphlet, and then we'll get out of your way. That was what I was going to interject with, so you got it, man. All right, yeah. cool. Uh, former Oklahoma State Senator found dead in Norman Holm. Uh, this is just, just breaking today. Norman, Oklahoma. Norman police are investigating a former state senator, Jonathan Nichols, found dead in an apparent gunshot wound inside his home. Police confirmed in a press release Thursday to discover the body of 53-year-old inside his West Norman home after receiving a call Wednesday night of an individual with a gunshot wound. Uh, that is the breaking news that we have for now. I want to. I, we've taken up some of Carrie Simon. Carrie, I apologize for that um thank you for being patient with us and your guest as well god bless you all thank you for watching us and trust me when i say we are going to stay on top of this much love